I would say that about, oh, 100% of people who get into the land business do so because they want to create a better life for their families. And while earning a good income, or even better, achieving financial independence really contributes to that goal, you haven't really created a better life for your family if you're working all the time. Take it from me, a serial workaholic. Wouldn't it be better if you could design your work life in such a way that you could make your family your top priority with respect to both money and time? On today's episode of the Land.MBA podcast, Dave and I are interviewing Joseph Abusi. Joe and his dad come from the commercial real estate world and made the strategic decision to pivot in the land. He tells us how he developed systems and processes that have enabled him to not only scale his business, but also keep his family as his top priority. Oh, and if you hang with us to the end, you'll hear the ultimate tool on how to maintain the perfect chrome dome hairstyle. I think Dave's life just improved for the better. Welcome to the Land.MBA podcast, where we go deep into the business of land investing. Joe, it is so great to have you on the show today. I mean, you and I have spoken so many times on the phone. You've been uh, a Landspeed customer for, well, I don't know, probably somewhere between four and six months now, I guess. Um, and uh, it's been a pleasure getting to know you, but what I really like is getting to know your your business. But before we get into the, the serial stuff, uh, I can't help but notice uh, you've got, is that a, an ASU jersey on the wall? Arizona State, yep. Back have to remind myself that at one point I did something. <laughs> Other than, I don't know, be a dad. It's fun. Yeah, Arizona State I played there 01 to 05. I, I mean, I'm just, I, I only see you from the Zoom screen, but I know that if I was on the other side and, and you were coming at me, I would be scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't know if I could catch you these days, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> As I used to say in my high school days, you know, I was small, but at least I was slow. So. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, I get, like, like we were talking about earlier, I'm short, but at least I'm fat. <laughs> so. <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll make a good. It'll be a fun race to watch. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, it, it strikes me as one of the, that that story about how do you uh, how do you avoid getting eaten by a bear? You just have to be faster than the other the guy. Other guy, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. See, well, Joe, your, your competition you is a skinny little kicker. <laughs> oh yeah. Look is that, at that hair. Look at Can you, you believe that hair? That's what you look I like. I know. Believe it or not. <laughs> I like the fact that you I like it. keep, uh, you know, the glory day picture up on your on your shelf. Day. Oh yeah, the powerhouse of Cal State Long Beach. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> hey, David, you'll actually like this. Hold on, I should have grabbed this second ago. You asked me what, what position I played, and I said pull back. Hold on, you'll like this. All right. This is my make fullbacks <laughs> great again hat. <laughs> That's awesome. Since, since apparently we're we're a dying breed and no, and nobody likes fullbacks anymore. Look, look. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Exactly. I, I remember growing up in the San Francisco Bay Area though with Tom Rathman. That dude was such a stud. Uh, there's there's oh, been man. some great fullbacks over the years though. Yeah, I know. The uh the one that always gets me is Mike Allstott. Yeah, he's a stud. He's a, God, his YouTube videos, every once in a while I just have to look him up again and realize that. That was a, there was a human that just dominated everybody he he hit. And then you got to have Chris Berman though doing the play by play. Doosh, That's right. Doosh. <laughs> Sound effects. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Yep. So so now I see Absolutely. you've you're now in your sort of sports retirement because if I'm not mistaken, I saw like a little putting green behind you in the office. Yeah. Well, this is my only escape way. We have, we have a. Uh, Two about to be three kids, and everything that I came into my marriage with went into an attic and is now in in my my office. So <laughs> it's it's pretty, pretty much everything I was able to salvage and hide in the attic. I've I've now brought to my office That's and put it up. Cave. So it's it. Yeah, it's it's a it's a everything's here. 
<laughs> so I'm really bad at golf, by the way. I don't have that there because I just need to practice all the time. I have I have to keep that there so that when I do play, I am still below average and just stay right below average in golf. So it's not a <laughs> not like excelling at putting. <laughs> uh, hey, the mail's yeah, starting to hit. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Let's let's dig in, man. So so tell me, was there signs that people who play team sports bring that experience into their business careers? Mm. What did you bring from your team sport experience into your business career? Um, so I think the main thing is not in here. The the so that's obviously one of our game jerseys but i think one of the things that i realized through any kind of team sport is uh like when you get to wear those jerseys that's like only the outcome of a lot of hard work in my practice jersey i was just back home and i actually found like three of my practice jerseys and i was like man these are the real trophies like this is where all like the good stuff happened where all the like we're like the you know we'd be getting up at Golly, four four thirty in the morning because we had to get a workout in before we had class at eight thirty, and uh, you know it was just a lot of stuff that normal students didn't have to do. Uh, you know they were getting up to go to class at nine ten o'clock and they've just woke up. I've been up since four, and uh, and you know the, all the that hard work early on that nobody saw wearing a jersey that nobody ever saw was like where all the difference was made. And I feel like I've thought about that because people have asked me before, and I think that's the main thing they got brought in. I mean, I feel like everybody at some point in their life learns how to work with the team that may come in, you know, whether that's a business team or you just have to work with people. But uh, that was, you know, learning that like the hard work to be able to wear the big Jersey happens when you're wearing a Jersey that's got a bunch of holes in it and, and where that one really takes all the hard work. And so, uh, and that just taught me that hard work happens when nobody's looking or very few people. So, and how to, how to dig in when everything's in. And I think one, one word that, or one phrase that I always used to hear was, uh, is just like embrace the suck. Cause that's, <laughs> you just, there's just, you know, nothing in life comes free and you're easy. And so you just kind of embrace the suck. And that's at the end of that, usually good things come out or come around. So yeah, that's, that'd probably be the best thing that came out of that. I love that. You know, I, I've always loved that phrase. And, you know, I, I think sometimes we hear it and we almost take it for granted. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's going to suck before it gets better. So embrace the suck. I think it's it's so much deeper than that. It's like, you know, the, the primary thing that keeps most people from succeeding is fear. Fear, oh, yeah. of, fear, fear of I'm not good enough, fear I'm going to look like an idiot. And it's all those <laughs> things. When you say embrace the suck, it means embrace the fear and don't run away from it just go with it because if you do you will you know action conquers fear and uh, and you can get past it. And that's what i think when i hear that phrase yeah and not not only that to me though it's like you just don't value things that are given to you the same way you do when you work hard for them and so it's you know you've got people who win the lottery and you see them just going bankrupt all the time you hear those stories. I mean, it's like you barely ever hear stories of like this person won the lottery and they they just killed in life after that. I mean, it's just like sob stories. And and I and I think that there's something connected to us in us as as humans of like I worked and toiled for this, and because I did that, I had an outcome that I look back. I get to lean back and drink a cup of coffee or whatever and say, man, that's good. Like I I was a part of that, you know. And it's versus like you know not really necessarily a part of something that was just always handed to you. You have no idea what it's about. And so to be able to to sit back and, and just embrace, like, I did that, like I was a part of that. And, uh, you know, all this stuff that nobody saw to accumulate this thing, you know, so mm -hmm. yeah, embrace the suck, D it's do like hard you, things. When you have that, you, you go out and you have a, just a, a killer game and, 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 and you win it, you, you get a big win, you know, Everybody just sees, you know, that you played great and you won the game, but they didn't see all the work that went into it, you know, right. and 
you know, all the blood, literal blood, sweat and tears uh, and aches and pains. And, you know, I mean, gosh, it's it's like when every now and then in this business, you get that double or triple or home run deal that seemingly falls in your lap. But you know that you you put in the work, you put in all the behind the scenes and you know, developing yourself and developing your business and doing the things every day that you need to do and chipping away at those little base hits. And that, that home run didn't just come, even though sometimes you do get lucky, but if you do the right things over and over and over again, what's that old adage? Um, I think Vince Lombardi coined it. Maybe it was him or maybe it was Bobby Knight, but it was uh, the, you know, I heard it is that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, mean, when when things fall in your lap, they fall in your lap because you put yourself out there and you made yourself known and available. So people come to you with opportunity. If you, if you didn't Mm -hmm. put all that work to make yourself known, then, you know, they're they're going to somebody else. Yeah. Have you ever been unprepared and, and and an opportunity came and you were not prepared? Yeah. Or yeah. Or it came to you. You couldn't act upon it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing I know is, uh, and I'm going to screw it up, but you know, that phrase, you know, the, the, they hire the consultant and they don't know, you know, what they're supposed to do. The consultant says, all right, let me take a look at it. And comes back in a couple of days. And, and I don't remember what the situation was, but he's like, yeah, uh, turn that dial to, uh, to nine. That'll be $15,000, please. And like, <laughs> just tell me to turn the dial to nine. It's like, yeah, it was 20 years of experience that led to that call so that you made the right decision. <laughs> Man, it's it's just crazy when you when you get also I don't know if you've ever done something where you put a ton of work into it and then somebody kind of swoops in and they get to enjoy the benefits of it. And I mean, much like I actually do with, with land speed. <laughs> you can come in and I get to pay for it, but I get it. but you know, even like I was David looking behind you at that, I just put something together like your bookcase there. And um you know, in the order of who gives a dang in my household about that bookcase, it's like I'm at the top who cares because not only did we not buy it, but I put it together, which really makes it a, a lot more valuable to me. Our wife's right underneath that. And then my boys, they could care less. They just showed up. And, you know, when you don't put something together and you're not the one that's building it, sometimes you just, you know, you can, we all are part of things like that where you, that you joined that you didn't build. Um, but just the idea of building something and then the amount of, sweat equity that you know you have in this thing that gives you appreciation for the hard work that's put into it and uh so yeah that's um that's good good yeah. stuff key one of the key things that helps us all be successful in business is, is you gotta you gotta develop good judgment and i noticed you talked about yourself and your boys you did not mention your wife and i just think that just shows really good judgment <laughs> <laughs> I did m- mention my wife there, by the way, Howard. I said she was right below me on Karen. <laughs> yeah, of course. But, mm, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. So there what, you go. Uh, what was your career path? What did you do after graduating college with your football degree? Man, yeah, with my football degree. Uh, <laughs> so I had I had kind of a – I had a long path to where I am right now um, with with a lot of, like, what do I do now? Um, when I first got out of uh, uh, ASU, um, I went from the Sun Devils over into actually ministry. So I was in youth ministry for three years um, with this a camp in Missouri called Kanakuk and then a youth ministry called Young Life. And so I was on, uh, and I was in there in Houston area and then um, uh, for two years and then can't cook for one. So I did that. And then, uh, and then I just was like, you know, I'm glad I did this. I was involved in that my whole life. Um, but then I was like, ready, ready to move on. And so this is going to sound like to everybody out there that I, I, I do love football. Uh, it's been a huge part of my life. However, I, I can't remember, can't tell you how many times I was sitting, waiting to go into meetings with guys and thinking and talking about this. I will never be a football coach. I mean, I, I'm spending like 90 hour weeks already. What does a coach have to spend? Because they're here before us and leave after us. And anyways, 
So then fast forward, I got called by my old high school and my brother was a junior in high school at the time. I'm about nine years older than him. And he said, do you want to come coach here? And I thought, I'm, I'm single. I was just about to make a career move to who knows what. And uh, anyways, I went with a teacher and a coach for three years. And there were some great things about it, but I was I was glad to move on uh, out of that. It's it's a uh, I, I love football, but sitting in a room just doing X's and O's for hours on end and grading film and everything that I knew had to go into that went into it. So did that for two years in Wichita Falls, Texas, which is my hometown, and then one year here in Austin, um, actually coaching with some of my old football coaches from when I was in high school. Um, and then from there, I, I got into real estate. Um, I was in real estate. I flipped houses when I was in college. And then, uh, wow. so then I kind of went back to that. I, I, I flipped houses, uh, started flipping houses here in Austin. Um, and uh, that's a whole different story. Uh, that, that is it's it's real fun to tell. It's a natural entrepreneur from the beginning. I mean, most people can barely get through their grades and their partying, and yeah. sort of, let alone I'm, a house. That's impressive. Well, houses in college. Well, Thanks. I, I had some really good men around me that, that were older and kind of were showing me the ropes. And so um, I, I was kind of fortunate enough to uh, be surrounded by uh, guys that were kind of said, Hey, I think you should probably come learn how to do this. And I just said, Hey, that sounds cool. I didn't, you know, <laughs> I wasn't as uh, it was fun. I was, I was lucky to be who was around me. Yeah. I, I, but I've been uh, an entrepreneur. I mean, I've had that spirit. My dad was has his own company and, I think everybody that I that, that I'm related to has tried to start something or, does, or has something. So I kind of grew up thinking I'm going to do something. So I better start with flipping a house. Why not? Seemed the most achievable. Um, so I did that for several years, actually with a cousin of mine here in town. Uh, then got into insurance for a little bit, still on the home side, uh, and then went to work for a company uh, here in Austin that's a that's a commercial real estate developer and. Uh, they also own um, industrial buildings, so they build like big multifamily uh, apartments and uh, have some offices. And um, they're in the Austin market, the Dallas market, the Houston market. Uh, and so for those guys, I kind of started off early on doing acquisitions for uh, like they did CVSs, and that was really more for the owners. I did stuff for them and finding CVSs and. Arby's and stuff like that. And that was kind of the smaller acquisitions. And then I started doing stuff for the company itself and was doing like the project side and did, did a land deal actually for them here in Austin that we did into a, uh, uh, an apartment complex. And so, um, had, was in, had a portfolio of industrial buildings that, that I was, uh, kind of working on the project side. And so when I quit, they, one of the owners asked me if I'd start a company to, uh, to do the maintenance up there since I had been kind of managing all those contracts and knew what they needed and knew all the, 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 the people that are in it. And so, um, when, when I left, I, I went in to quit, uh, I actually got a, like a ch check for like 10 grand from a investment I did with them on an Arby's deal earlier that I didn't even know I had left over, which was great. And then they were like, and hey, do you want to start a company? We'll be your, <laughs> your first uh, client. I walked out like a little daze. I was like, did I just quit or things go really right? It was like the best quitting, quitting ever. That's going awesome. in and they'd be like, man, this is great. So also you want to start a company. And, um, uh, and so then, uh, my dad and I, I was, I was quitting to, to go to, to work with my dad. And we, we kind of had a general idea of what we wanted to do. None of which has happened. We went a totally different direction, kind of starting with the commercial real estate stuff. Um, and, uh, I put together, um, I'm not really a maintenance guy as far as like knowing how to do all the stuff. I know when stuff doesn't look right, but that's not really my, um, uh, you know, my background. Um, but, uh, I knew we could hire people like that. So we got a couple of people on that were really good with the actual know how to do it. I, what I put together was, uh, kind of how to manage the team and reporting to the client and, making sure we had a, so we, we put a technology, a, a little technology piece into it that you don't really find in a lot of maintenance companies. And so it kind of helps just really with transparency to the client and, um, and really allowing us to track what's been done and how it's been done. So 
we've got that going still. We're going on almost four years with that. And, uh, it's almost to the point where it's running itself. Truly. I've got, I got guys who just go what they're doing unless I don't even really have to step in unless there's like a real problem or so we have a good new at, property good, or something. So you're good at systems then, huh? I like systems. Yeah. That's good. Well, you I know what? Don't, it's just, so I'm kind of like, what do I do now? I want to hear about more, a little bit more about your systems and how you brought the stuff from commercial over into your land business. But before we do that, yeah. I got to say a few words about land speed. Hey folks, my name is David Van Steenkist and I've been a real estate investor for over 10 years. I've used lots of different tools, but none of them has done for my business what Landspeed does. Landspeed covers every step in the land investing process from ordering mailing lists to marketing sales and closing the deal. What I really like though, is it anticipates my needs when I think, oh, I wish I had a quick and easy way to evaluate return on investment on a potential property, look no further, Landspeed does it. If I wanna edit a deed after Landspeed creates it, it can do that too. Most systems just stick you with a PDF that's uneditable and you gotta go back into the system and edit the fields and do whatever you need to do and it's a real pain in the rear end. Landspeed simplifies it. If I wanna send one or five or even 40 neighbor letters at the click of a button, bam, Landspeed does it. Um, but even with all that inherent capability, you get access to Landspeed community, you get weekly mastermind calls, and you get the best mailing rates in the business with no volume commitment, which is freaking awesome. Because if I just want to pop one contract to somebody, I don't have to pay a buck and a half. I still pay the bargain basement rate. And on top of that, customer service is stellar, quick, and they just do a great job. I've been very, very happy, very pleased with it. Uh, and look, I've been running my business on land speed for over two years. So take it from me. If you're serious about your land business, then check out land speed at facebook.com slash land biz automation. That's land B I Z automation. And if you want a hundred bucks off, Tell them you heard it from me, David Van Steenkist, on the Land.MBA podcast. So tell me, uh, tell us about, you know, how the systems that you developed in your current business for uh, managing uh, the uh, commercial real estate maintenance into your land business. Sure. And how is that positively or negatively? What, how has that impacted your current business? Well, it's both how... You know, so the name of our company is Method Property Services. And so the whole thing about it, when our spill, when we give it is like, there's a method behind how we move forward. It's not just like, hey, call a plumber, we're going to show up. Like we're, we have steps when our, when our people get on the phone, they, they walk through processes and uh, steps that, that in my mind seem logical, maybe not to everybody, but at least to me, it's like, hey, this is a way that we can logically walk forward uh, in this and, and you can always hire people who know how to do stuff. I just want to make sure that when we were saying we're doing something, we had a way that it was, everything was falling in line. Everything was, if this happened, it triggered these things. And so that was really the method I wanted to use, um, to move forward was, it was applying logic to the maintenance, if you will. And so really within the fast forward into, to land. Uh, my dad and I were wanting to get into the more the investment side of real estate. And uh, a, a couple things about it. It's like, you know, I, I'd been involved with a bunch of deals that were like 60, 70, $150 million. I, I really, being on the back of that stuff, I really did not want to raise and get in, get into, or didn't even know if I could raise that kind of capital to get, you know, it's just, so it's just a world that I go, that was, yeah, I just was like, I, I don't know that that's, that's, I'm not even sure I got that personality. I mean, it's, it's, uh, just didn't really want to do that. So then we started looking at what if we did some just like, you know, one, you know, one off, we find something, we put, put a deal together. We either try to do it ourselves or we, we bring a group in and, you know, we looked at that for a while. And then I had somewhere along the way, podcast talking to somebody and I, I don't know what triggered it. I, I heard about land investing and coming from a the awesome market B kind of a commercial estate background that specializes investing. 
I was like, every time that I read or, or watched something on this, and I, and I pretty much watched everybody, you know, uh, at, at first, uh, you, you hear passive income, and it still, to me, makes me like cringe a little bit hearing the words. I just don't like it because I feel like I'm going to have, you know, there's like somewhere at the top of this pyramid, there's somebody that's just laughing and bathing in $1 bills or hundreds or something. And, <laughs> and I, you know, I'm somehow coming at the bottom of this pyramid scheme is what it sounds like. It's just the terminology people use a lot of times. Sorry about y'all. That's what y'all use in your marketing. <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, <laughs> So we we it's, use uh, the term passive income with a wink and a nod. <laughs> yeah. And so we, yeah, exactly. So when I started getting into it, I realized, well, it's really not passive income. What I'm really looking for is automated income and yeah, stuff that I, I like can be that. involved, be involved in it. And it's really in the bottom end is what everybody's actually selling. Nobody, I, I feel like you get into this, something like this and you realize I'm not going, this actually takes work. If you don't think it takes work, then it's probably not for you and probably nothing's for you. You should go work for somebody else that will do all this kind of stuff. And so we, you know, and I, to be honest with you, I'm not looking also to just sit back and do nothing. That sounds, to me, that sounds miserable. So, uh, I, you know, I want to, want to build something, want to build something with my dad. And as we started looking at this, I thought, golly, I can, you know, the, 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 the ROI on these things is just really is huge. And once I kind of like, basically did phone call interviews with a bunch of different people. I realized, okay, this is like a legit thing. I'm not like, you know, people are, this is really in the, at the bottom of the, you know, at the end of the day, it's real estate. Uh, so once I realized that and started hearing a bunch of people about how you price all this, I quickly realized I need something that can manage this. And I, I'd been using some different platforms and I, I'm just, I, it makes me, sh my skin crawl thinking about trying to uh you know manage everything without like applying logic to every step of the way if that makes sense like some kind of process some kind of like thing where because our my dad and I, as also as i look back i thought anybody that's doing this worth anything is doing it full-time like there, there are people who are doing part-time and they're doing it's doing really well because it's supplementing their their income in a, in a good way but anybody that's just like the people that I was kind of tracking going, okay, what are they doing? They're all doing it full time and they're all going full speed ahead on it. And so from the beginning, I was telling my dad, I was like, our plan on this does not need to be, we need to be going out and buying the first $500 lot we can find and, and figure out how fast we can flip it. It needs to be what, what do we need to be building right now? So that in three years when we've got, you know, we, when the, when the machine is full up and running, we are not scrambling to be able to maintain all the stuff going in. So our, our first priority when building this was, Hey, what's something we can get in without having to take a huge line of credit out. I, I kind of skipped that part going earlier. We wanted to get real estate. I saw this. I didn't, we, we thought, well, this is something that's got great returns. We can both do it. It'd be fun. And we don't need to go out and take out or raise a million dollars or more to do it. And so, um, so then it was like, well, how do we build this in a way? Because it's clearly numbers and it's clearly, uh, you know, it's a lot of paperwork in the end. And it's a lot of follow up. It's a lot of, you know, we have to have some systems. And so that's really the first time I saw Howard stuff. Um, I, maybe the first thing I saw, I think I was maybe more impressed with Price Boss initially, which was his 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 pricing tool, because that was like the biggest thing as a new as a new uh, uh land investor, if you will. I, it was the part I just could not get my mind around, especially coming from commercial real estate, working for a REIT where we had, you know, a spreadsheet with 30 tabs on it, all linked together to figure out what the pricing was on these things. And, and it just felt like rolling the dice and there was some number on it. And, you know, I, I know that's not what anybody teaches, but I just, I couldn't get my mind around the logic of this. And his price boss kind of like well, that was the first step that got into it. And I think the, it was kind of the front door for me to looking at his uh, land speed kind of um, the uh, CRM. And so uh, that's kind of what we have been building for the last four months, four to six months is, is really, I mean, we're still sending mailers. We're still doing that, but honestly, we're less worried about what we're buying right now, what we're selling. Um, than we are practicing uh, wearing those, 
not wearing that jersey back there, but wearing the practice jersey. Um, and you know, seeing what works, what kind of, what doesn't work, what, what are the platforms we need for when stuff starts coming in. And really within the last like three weeks is really when we've started, um, uh, kicking up the machine of, uh, of everything so that we can start handling, uh, you know, more, more income. So that's all, you know, and, and within land MBA, what we always tell our students is in the, the first six months is really a learning curve, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The goal, you know, is to buy properties and to sell properties because then you're in action, you're actually learning it, but you're applying the learning and you're doing it into real deals. And you're going to turn around and when you sell those deals, you're going to make some money. But don't think of it, wow, I just made money in the land business. Think of it like, wow, I just got paid to get an education, you know, because <laughs> that first six months is all about education. And once you've kind of been through the whole circuit a few times and, and you start to, internalize it's okay it, it takes all the mystery out of it you know i would say when right. you know how to do something it's all black magic you yeah. know you, you must have some kind of magical powers to be able to do that it's like how is it that three people in three different parts of the country can come together in one session on video and be able to talk it's all black magic right so but once you understand how things work you know then you say like wow is that all there is to it i can do it if i can do it anybody can do it right yeah yeah and get through that learning curve. And I think, I think yeah. the way you're approaching this is, is so smart. Uh, and once you do that, and, and once you figure out that you've got systems and processes that will scale, now you know you can turn the spigot on and, uh, and really, really you know, go home and feel confident what you're doing. It's great. Yeah. And, you know, there's, it's, it's you know, different sp- strokes for different folks too. You know, I mean, you, I, I love your, your systematic approach. Uh, and, you know, um, I'm, I'm a little bit different in that, like with my students, I push them out of the airplane and say, grow wings. So my, my thing is let's get mail flying. Everything else will take care of it. We'll figure it all out when deals start coming in. Cause I want people to be able to pay for their education right now. Sure. Uh, And I think that approach is really important for, you know, we, we pretty, uh, we thought through that on how, on which way it should be. And, and um, for us specifically, like I said, different strokes for different folks. And the reason we both had income coming in from other areas. And right. so, but we were also wanting to do this full time. And then the second part of this is, is we both knew with my dad and my personality that we were going to be quitting. I think one of the best reasons to get people to see instant success with that kind of thing and see it's real is A, they're still trying to prove it to me, prove it to themselves that I'm investing myself in a good reason. So it is. Real important to get that out there, get your first sell, get some gravity. We both just, we, we literally had to sit down and look at each other and said, we're okay with not doing it that direction because I'm not trying to make an extra 5,000 a month on it. That's not my goal. Right. You, you know, that's right. what my goal is, is going to require me to have, you know, or early and often, uh, you know, uh, training for, setting up what's going to be able to handle the kind of volume we want to eventually be doing. And so no, we will sell and buy when we can on it. It honestly wasn't our first. Uh, and I don't know that that's the right move for everybody. And hell, it might not be the right move for us. It's yeah. it just, it's just how we're, it's kind of how we thought through it and thought, Hey, this is, we know we're in it. And we didn't, we didn't, we need no more convincing. We need no more, you know, but then it was just like, okay, well, I want to, we want to do it what seems like the right way and the right way for us on how we're going to operate. You're right. I think what you said on how you do it with your students is probably the right way for maybe a lot of people. Um, That's actually to be determined for us. Do that. Almost every land investor goes through the first big epiphany they have to have is this, this business is for real and it works. And then the second big epiphany is I can do it. You know, and it reminds me of this meme I recently saw where there was this unicorn lying on the therapist's couch and the therapist says, you have to believe in yourself. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, you're a serial entrepreneur. You've been doing an entrepreneurial thing since college. And the thing about an entrepreneur is, and I think this is the mistake a lot of people make because they think, you know, entrepreneurs, they, they're smart. They know how to do things. Actually, I don't think that's true at all. I think what, what defines an entrepreneur is they've got absolute confidence 
in their ability to figure it out. And that's it. That's right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Be like exactly water. Right. <laughs> fit in where you need to fit in. Yeah. Um, yeah so that's good. I like that. I, I I would always tell people there's a huge difference between being entrepreneurial and being an entrepreneur. And the difference is you're willing to take risk. I was, for most of my yeah. time, entrepreneurial because I started companies, I've started, built new products, but I always did it inside of a corporation. They were taking all the risk. I was just doing all the work. And right. the reason I didn't do it on my own is because at that time, at the point in my life, I wasn't willing to take on the risk. Yeah. And so, yeah. thank God. I, like, it's like being an outside the, what sales. Was the you know, you're, 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 you're entrepreneurial as a salesperson because you got to go out there and, and you got to plan your territory and, 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 and all that. And you're very independent, but you still have health care and a car and a base salary. So, and you're not coming out of pocket with any of your own money. Yeah. Oh, man. What was the point for you guys? Uh, just, just curious that y'all, what was the, what was the selling point that this, this business is real? Uh, and you realize I better figure out how to scale. Well, you want to go first, Howard? Do you want me to go for it? I, I was in real estate, so I was also flipping houses and, um, you know, I'd been kind of in, in engineering for a while, management sales, most of my career. And, um, I had actually done a stint. I had sold a company, part of a company or a company I was part owner in, moved over to and lived in Sweden for about three years and came back to the States with um, a little bit of money in my pocket and, and, you know, no job. And, you know, I was kind of looking for a business to start or maybe a small business to buy. And um, I, you know, I took some rich dad courses and learned how to flip houses and and I flipped about, I don't know, 15, 20 houses and, and I did okay. Uh, but, you know, I soon realized that I was working harder, had a lot more stress. And I wasn't really at the end of the day, making much more money that I made in a, in a sales job. <laughs> and, and, uh, right. and, but you know, I was a lot more stressed, taking a lot more risk. And then uh, I think I heard a podcast and uh, I, I bought somebody's you know, inexpensive course, but because I, I had a lot of real estate experience and whatnot, um, the concepts came to me very easily. So, I mean, I devoured the course in a weekend and within three, four days I sent mail out and, and I got some deals. Now the, wow. I, you know, I was, I was bottom fishing, but I proved to myself that the, you know, I was able to sell those deals and make a, you know, a few thousand bucks and I'm like, this works. And then I got offered a really good job to go back into sales and um, I'm like, okay, I, I stuck that in the back of my brain. I said, I'm coming back to this, but I got to take this job right now. And, and so I took right. it and about a year later after I was up to speed and doing well, I started doing land again on the side um, and I was able to scale it quite quickly. And, um, you know, so now I'm here doing it full time and um, it's going all right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I, well, I mean, your question is specifically about scaling. So I'll get past the point about how I got into the land business. But what happened, yeah. I was, uh, I got into it and I started doing a lot of deals. And uh, I was having lunch with uh, a friend of mine who was a serial entrepreneur who I've worked for in two different companies. And uh, he sold his first company to Cisco Systems and he sold his second company to AT&T. And I mean, this guy's, you know, he's hot stuff. I mean, he knows what he's doing no. I did with the VC community and all that. And uh, so we're having lunch and, you know, he's asking me what I'm up to and I'm telling him about the land investing. And he, you know, like, like he's sort of like the guy that's now sold the business. So he works for the VC and he's evaluating other people's businesses and right, right. giving me all the tough questions and the operational questions and all that. And then I'm telling him how I'm doing business. And so at that time, I was still mailing out of my house. So I was printing my letters. I was printing my envelopes. I was folding and stuffing, licking stamps and taking them to the post. Probably spending four to six hours a week on mailing. And you know, I've told this story a million times, but he looked at me and he, he just, as, as men will say to men, he just looked at me and said, dude, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> 
working. He's like, no, man, no. He said, if you want to make big money, you have to solve big problems. And you can't solve mm. problems when you're wasting all your time solving little problems like figuring out how to get mail out the door. That's what you automate or pay people to do. Your time is way too valuable to be mailing letters. And that was sort of my big aha moment. And uh, I went home that night and I literally started the process of automating my mail. And, um, awesome. and then once I did that, I looked at the business and I said, all right, well, at a high level, there's nine steps in the business, right? So I, I choose a county, I get a list, I scrub and price the list, I mail the list, I do due diligence on properties, I close on properties, I market properties, I sell properties, and in some cases, I default on properties. And that's pretty much the whole business end to end. I started just from that first mailing bit, and I said, you know what? I can do this. So I just started taking one of those steps at a time, and I said, I'm going to go really, really deep into every little bit of process that I do in that step, and I'm going to try to figure out how I can automate everything. And what mm -hmm. I can't automate, I'll outsource, but I'm going to, I'm going to automate the outsourcing too. And, uh, and before you know it, you know, it took me a while, you know, but I got all nine steps done. Uh, I wasn't in any rush because I was just doing it for myself. And uh, so I was able to add my full ADD nature to the job. And, uh, and then when it was done, I shared it with some of my friends in the business. And they're like, oh, this is cool. We'd like this. And I'm like, oh, maybe light bulb went on. Like, you know, maybe there's something else here. And that's, that's how, when I started Landscape. But that's really what it came down to. It came down to a good friend of mine kind of slapping me down a little bit, you know, taking me off my high horse and saying, you're not focusing on the right stuff. Man, that's good stuff. And I, I tell you, it's, it's uh, I pride myself on the fact that because of men like you, I've not had to mail a single letter out of my house. In fact, my printer's broken. So I just, I just get to hit it off to click the mail and, and forget about it. But it, it's really funny. I mean, it's, a, the, it's really hard to even monetize this part of the real estate business, that part of it, of the automation, because, you know, there's there's nine steps in this. And I thought, you're right, eight, maybe nine. But, you know, and, and even... You know, David, you said you flipped houses for a while. I mean, I, I could you even lay down how many steps it is to flip a house? No, there's no, there's there's so there's so many steps, and in the time that you did that, you you know, and and it, and you really may make nothing sometimes. I mean, the market could do could do something weird. You could get in there and you've got a foundation issue that you just have to fix, and all of a sudden you're you're working four months for a hundred bucks. Or you're working four months to pay something else. And it's just so that to I, have, I've done that for it, minus 20,000 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'm, I've done it for about the same. And it's, that, <laughs> well, Dave will have to switch, switch stories where everybody thinks that, <laughs> that it's like you're like Joanna, Joanna and, and Chip Gaines every time I'm just making ants. Those, 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 you don't imagine how boring, by the way, a reality TV land. Um, yeah. show would be. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you know what cracks me up though is, is is when you watch those uh flipping house shows and they show the the numbers after a while and after oh, and you're like so wrong. They're leaving so much stuff out. They're not telling the whole story at all. You know, not at all. And uh, I, it's, I had, it's a, like, I had it's like a contractor paint, thousand bucks. I had a contractor rip me off for thirty grand. Now, luckily, it was spread over four houses that he was doing for me, and I made money on all of them. But I would have loved to have that extra thirty grand. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a true story. <laughs> yeah, I had, crazy. Uh, I, I'm sure you can relate to this. I didn't coin this, but I adopted it. Every contractor has a shelf life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, man, that is so true. And what a you know what a great part about this is the for me i just you know i've got two little kids and I, you know any day now uh a third and Congrats. the impact that well thank you the impact that this has had on like my family because i do have another job i'm kind of responsible to it's, i mean we you know about five hours a week but i still have to do that and so all my time goes towards this but the fact that i get to spend more time with my boy today's a perfect example my wife works part-time 
as an architect and uh, she had an emergency. And so I didn't get to work today until three in the afternoon. And obviously, um, but to be able to just say I'm staying home for the day uh, is one thing I love about the land business. I, was, I, might, I remember my dad in high school saying, you know, get eventually after you go out there and get your, you know, all your education, all your, your jobs, you, you want to find something that when you leave or you need to be gone, it's still running itself. And that was kind of how he modeled his his business. And, and back in the day, his, he has a, a logistics company for shipping. And back in the day, they they developed some technology that kind of did that before anybody else was really even doing that. And so it was that was you know something he was familiar with applying technology to your business in order to eventually make it so that you know for him and what I've kind of adopted with me is that I want my family to be the priority. And I've and I've seen this with a lot of friends in there too, that when they people say that, but then they get so wrapped up in their business and they never allow things to be taken over or things to be taken off their plate that, that, that you know, I mean, my, my oldest son's four, but I feel like he was born yesterday. I mean, I'm sure you've got older kids that they're 18 and a heartbeat and leaving. And so I just thought, man, I've got, I got a bigger job, which is being a dad, being a husband. And that doesn't, that doesn't upend my, you know, that, that doesn't take presence over me uh, having a, a career. And so, you know, the, the second part to this is one of the scale and this being, being something we use um, as our sort, our only income is I had to have something that did these, all these things for me. And so, you know, as, as again, circling back to kind of how we use land speed, I mean, it's like, I don't know how many employees that takes the place of, but at least, a, at least a couple. Uh, and, you know, handing off things to VAs and, and, and being able to integrate everything together because I want to go, you know, blow up the bounce house in the backyard with, with my two boys uh, <laughs> instead of licking and packing mail and sending it off or, uh, you know, spending, I, I, you know, before this, what I did do is go parcel by parcel and price things prior to having price boss. I just, I can't even put how valuable that tool is, has been to me it just fits my logic um and you know being able to get home a little earlier because of that and be able to you know feel sleep at night because i feel like i didn't just guess at pricing i might have been wrong on the pricing on how i you know pulled the information and stuff like that and that's a different issue but it's not because i didn't apply you know uh, solid logic to how we were breaking it down and so the impact on just family life has been a really big deal for me uh, and knowing that I can take her days off like this, or I can go to Colorado and uh, go to the beach, you know, and and things are still moving. Go to the beach work in Colorado. Go to the beach. Yeah, go to the beach. Well, they do have sand up there. They have big, they have great sand dunes, whatever it's called. True. The I beach out here in Texas or up in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> have you been there? It's beautiful. Have you ever been there? It, it is gorgeous. Yeah, you know, I haven't spent a lot of time down there. I've just pretty much driven through. But it it is pretty. My dad took us there when we were in, when we were in, I was in high school as a family, and I I don't remember the build up to it, but I just remember thinking it was the strangest thing and just to see mountains, and then all of a sudden like sand dune pushed up against the mountain. It supposedly got blown onto there after millions of years of coming off the river. Anyways, weird deal. <laughs> pretty interesting, but a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Is it just me, or is it getting harder and harder to count on a job for our financial security? Who would have ever believed that we would go from the lowest unemployment in 50 years to 40 million people unemployed? Whether you have a great job and want to create a second income, or you're recently unemployed, you need to check out Land.MBA, your one-stop shop for land investors. Investing in vacant land is a proven business model that can help you build a reliable, scalable second income. Imagine a business where you love what you do. There's no limit on how much money you can make. You can operate your business from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. And best of all, you can never be fired or downsized. If this sounds good to you, Land.MBA provides everything you need to get your business up and running and delivering income quickly. You get education, an end-to-end -end video course, and optional coaching to help you get started faster and turn your energy into income. You get tools so you can automate and outsource the busy work and stay super organized. You get access to a thriving community of like-minded investors, which is a powerful way to share best practices and develop potential partnerships for growing your business. And finally, you get access to deal financing, 
so you never have to pass on a great investment opportunity due to limited funds. Our team has over a decade of real estate investing experience and has the knowledge and experience you need to help navigate any investing scenario. And with Land.MBA, we hold nothing back. Because there are no upsells, you get access to all of our combined knowledge right out of the gate. So don't wait to provide your family with financial freedom. Sign up today for Land.MBA's Soup to Nuts Land Investing Video Course. Just go to courses.land.mba and use coupon code FREEDOM to get 25% off. That's courses.land.mba, coupon code FREEDOM. And let us help you say goodbye to your J-O-B and hello to financial freedom. Where, where, where are you going with this, Joe? What are your big plans for the business? Do you have any uh, objection, objection? Yeah, I mean, our, you know, I'd say my main objective and what we're doing is what I was saying with, with family. That's the ultimate goal. Is I'd like to be able to take it up to family places. You know, if they, you know, feel that, that uh, also love the fact that, you know, a lot of different businesses you couldn't really explain to your, your kids, but already my, my four-year-old, at least not my two-year-old quite yet, but my four-year-old, I, I'm able to kind of show him stuff. He's already asked if there's a, if he can, he has, he has $5. Can I put $5 into that? And they're like, yeah, sure. Let's, <laughs> you know, it's a very explainable to little kids because in the end, in the end of the day, and, and David, you said earlier, you kind of got the real estate part of this and, uh, and Howard, I, knowing you, I'm sure you've done a million things too. It's some of it probably being in real estate. I, I understood how to buy a property. Like I knew what a deed was. I knew where to find them on CAD, you know, on CAD, where the, how to call the, the, you know, none of that stuff. The only part that actually made me nervous about this is selling stuff on Facebook. That was the one thing I had never done. I've never sold property on Facebook. And that's been my biggest learning curve probably. But I love uh, going back to my, I, I love that I can, it, it can influence my family and impact my family in so many ways. But secondly, with my dad, I mean, we want to grow it so that it eventually replaces uh, his income and his other business. So he can, you know, that, if that ever scales out, he can back that out and like that to be able to support uh, them, us on our side. I think what that looks like long term is that we have a, a portfolio built up of uh, of uh, term deals. Um, kind of, we've heard this before. I did not make this up. This is not hard to find. But we would like the setup where we have 80% term, 20% cash. Clearly, at the beginning, I would like that to be more on the cash side, just to build up. Uh, you know, I'd love to also to never have to take out money on any of this stuff unless we're doing a lot larger deals, which we would like to in the future. But I'd like to have, uh, you know, our, our kind of goal in the, the next three to five years is is 300 to 500 properties uh, under term. That's the, that's the long term. I, don't, I think it's probably ambitious, but it's doable. Why shoot for something you, why, why shoot for something you know you can do? So, That's <laughs> so right. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think I might be able to do this, but it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, so that's, that's kind of our long, long-term goal, a long-term, that's our next three to five year uh, goal on this. And, uh, where we've got a solid stream of income on here, we've got, you know, maybe several different people working for us on different parts of this and see where that goes. Yeah. I, I love, I love what you said about something, you know, you can explain with your kids and you kind of get them involved and use it as a, a, a learning, a life learning tool. I uh sure. And your I, four-year-old wants to throw in. I love it. <laughs> he wants to throw in. He's got five dollars. What will I give me that? I was like, well, yeah. Yeah, well my, I'll double your money. I promise that. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 son wanted to uh invest in, in some some precious metals. Yeah, he's he's eleven years old. I'm like, okay, I've got I, I yeah. what do you got? He's like he shows me his mind. I'm like, all right, you have enough for two ounces of silver. Perfect money and you will own two ounces of silver and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. So I, but the, the more impressive thing is I, you know, when I launched uh price, well, when I was launching price boss, man, about a year and a half ago now, um, he was about 10, I guess. And, uh, and he was really curious about it because I was spending a lot of time working. And he's like, dad, what are you working on? I'm like, I'm working on price boss. He's like, well, what is it? And I'm explaining it to him. How's it work? And I showed it to him and without missing a beat, Going back to, you know, the, his experiences on, you know, video games or whatever what he's doing online, he's like, Dad, you really need to offer a, a free trial. 
<laughs> yeah. It's a free trial. Like, oof, I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> yeah. But he was <laughs> that night I stayed up all night and I figured it out. And I'm like, it, it made all the difference in the world. So I, I basically I give him money now for every one I sell because he, he came up with the whole idea for a free trial. <laughs> Straight. Oh, that's awesome. That's um, awesome. So the I can do is marketing too. As as we as we come to to wrap up, the question that has been on my mind this entire uh, podcast, and I, I really need to know the answer to it, is: um, Do you and Dave use the same barber? <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> yep. Off the, the top, there's a Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> You, you know, I've been down the Dollar Shave Club path before. The uh, I just it's this thing called the Omni Shave. This is I know you didn't mean to ask this, but now Howard, we're on this. David, have you ever heard the Omni Shave before? Uh uh-uh. uh It it has got two razors that both face in, and so every direction you go, it shaves. It's amazing. Your head's done in like three minutes. Really, Omni Shaver? Yeah, Omni Shaver. I'm gonna check that out. <laughs> Yeah, for all, for all you guys up there that don't have hair, check out the Omni Shaver. You get, I honestly, I'm not even sure you can cut yourself. Do they have you an affiliate do, link? It, it, <laughs> they probably have an affiliate link. Yeah, they. It, it's basically what it feels like you're doing is it feels like you're standing your head with a with like a sander block, like you're just like this real fast and you're just done. That's great. It's great. So that's just impressive. Howard, you should try this haircut. Yeah. Well, it would certainly save me a lot of money on shampoo, I guess. Not that I use that much. That's right. You know, if I had a full head of hair like that, I think I'd keep it. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know if y'all can see. I actually have hair. I'm losing a little bit back here, and I'm I'm a little bit this, but I shaved my head a while back, and I just thought, I am. This is amazing. Like this is the greatest haircut in the world, and so I shave it, and I get let it get down to basically a buzz cut. Uh, and then I shave it again because if I if I don't I have to like use clippers. Right. I don't want to do that. Right. So uh, I, I keep it just short enough, and I just never. I wake up in the morning. While, while Howard, you're still getting that cool swoop going on. <laughs> David and I have already brushed our teeth or out the door. I, it's like <laughs> one less step. That's right. That, that I have to take care of. So it's like you know. Yeah. Well, you know what it is. Squirt that gel into your hair and shave your head and grow a goatee. Look like a badass. <laughs> That's right. I shaved my I shaved my goatee for COVID, you know, <laughs> but I'm, yeah. I'm a little scruffy today. I haven't I didn't shave this weekend. I had to shave my beard though, that back down to about this length because I, I, I realized I, I had no hair and I I eliminated that. But all of a sudden I was having to like comb my I was spending more time on my beard <laughs> than I was. I was like, the hell with this. <laughs> we're making them both just manageable there you, you go the perfect 1970s starsky and hutch mustache <laughs> thank you thank you it's uh i've had it before i've had a nice my wife just cringes every time i, I about yeah. once a year i'll try to shave my beard and i just says you know yeah, oh, yeah. i did down it <laughs> 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 ah, perfect. Oh, there you go. On that note. <laughs> oh, look thanks you guys for having me on. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, man. Good getting to know you. We hope you enjoyed this episode, had a bit of fun, and walked away with some actionable insights that you can apply to your business. Dave and I have got some great content and interviews planned. So don't forget to rate and review and, of course, subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. If we mention any interesting links or tools, you'll find them in the show notes. To learn more about Land.MBA, visit our website at, wait for it, Land.MBA. See you next time on the Land.MBA podcast.